Yo, what's up everyone? Patrick here. Welcome back. And in this video, we're going to go through this question here, this example. It's kind of tough. It's a little bit unique. So we're going to take this function f of x, which is x to the power of 3 plus a plus b x squared plus a b plus c x plus a c. And we're going to divide it by x plus a. And then we're going to express f of x in terms of the divisor, quotient, and remainder. And then given all that, we got to create a cubic polynomial that has x minus 3 as a factor, right? So there's lots going on here. Now, I want to talk about this format here. The a, b, and c, those are just some kind of numbers, right? So x to the power of 3 has a coefficient of 1 in front. The coefficient of x squared is this a plus b. Just think about that bracket as just a number in front of the x squared. Then a, b plus c, that's a number in front of the x. And then a, c, that's just a constant at the end. Right, so what we're going to be doing is taking that function and dividing it by x plus a. So I'm going to do that over here. So I'm going to write out this function again, x to the 3 plus a plus b x squared plus a b plus c x plus a c, like that. And then Pretending that all of these are numbers, you just go through that same process that we did with long division. So how many times does x go into x to the power of 3? x squared times. x squared times x is x to the 3. And then x squared times a, that's just going to be a x squared. And so what we're going to be doing is subtracting this whole expression. So x to the 3 minus x to the 3, that's just 0. Now, what's this going to be? On the side here, a plus b x squared, we're going to be subtracting a x squared. And so what this simplifies to, notice if we distribute, we would have a x squared plus b x squared minus a x squared. Notice that the a x squareds are going to cancel out. So when we subtract these two, we're just left with b x squared, like that. Okay, and now what's going to happen is we bring down this term, right? So we're going to end up having a, b plus c, x. So I'm following the exact same protocol as we do when there's actual numbers involved, right? So how many times does x go into b, x squared? Uh, b, x times. And so now b, x times x would give us b, x squared then bx times a is going to give us abx, right? So what's going to happen here? We're going to subtract this whole thing, bx squared minus bx squared. That's just 0. But this term minus this, what's that going to be? Well, on the side here, ab plus cx minus abx, like that. Distribute. We'll have abx plus cx minus abx. Those cancel out. We're just left with a cx here when we subtract these. And then we're going to bring this down. And so now, how many times does x go into cx, c times? c times x is cx, c times a is ac. And so when we subtract these, notice they're the exact same expression. We would end up with a remainder of 0. And so now what we can do is we could take that function. Now, a function, what's the general format? It's basically the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Right? So what we can do is take this make it equal to the divisor, x plus a, times the quotient, x squared plus bx plus c, plus the remainder. The remainder is just 0. And so basically, that function up there, I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm just going to write out the divisor, x plus a, times x squared plus bx plus c. So all of this is equal to that there, plus that remainder of 0, which we don't have to write. All right, so we solved the first part 
of the question with that division. But now what we got to do is create a polynomial, a cubic polynomial that has x minus 3 as a factor. Well, notice just in general that this function has a factor x plus a because when we divided this function by x plus a, the remainder was 0. So by the factor theorem, that means x plus a is a factor. And so if we bring in actual numbers now, we can have this x minus 3 here. And so what we can do is if x minus 3 is a factor, x plus a is a factor, notice that in this case the a value is negative 3, right? And what we can do now is we can just pick any values for b and c. And then we could take those values and then plug it in here and that would give us a cubic polynomial. So one more time, x plus a is a factor of this function. And so if we're saying x minus 3 is a factor, then notice that the a value is going to be negative 3. And then we could just pick any b and c value. So let's pick a b value of 1 and a c value of 2. So we would have x squared plus x plus 2. And basically, I could take these and plug them in here, so we would have x to the 3 plus a plus b, a plus b is negative 2, so this would be minus 2x squared, a b plus c, a times b is negative 3, plus c, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, so this would be um, negative x plus a times c, negative 6. Right, so this cubic polynomial, that's an example of a cubic polynomial. This cubic polynomial has a factor of x minus 3, and you can actually check it. If you plug in 3 for all the x values, we'd have what? 27 minus 18, which would give us 9, minus 3 is 6, minus 6 is 0. Right, and then you could take this, you could divide it by x minus 3, you'd get a remainder of 0 as well. That's another way to verify. And we could pick, the a value has to be negative 3 because that's the factor we're working with. We could pick any values for b and c. We could have like 10 and maybe like 200 here. And then just take these and plug them in here. right? And that polynomial is always going to have that x minus 3 as a factor because we let that a be negative 3. The b and c can be anything.